Oh, it's T1 time! T1 at Worlds, finally! We waited a year for this moment and let's just fucking see this ah, beautiful game. It's a rematch of the EWCQ, that's the Esports World Championship, where we are BTS quite decently. I think it was a 3-1 or something. Uh, yeah, we kind of like schooled them all over the place. After that, we had some issues, but hey, that's all history, that's all yappen yappen. Let's talk about more history, how we are the reigning world champions, right? There's a reason, wrong side, there's a reason there are four stars here. We just got that one last year after beating all of the LPL and so on and so on. Great times, great times, the, the best of times. Anyway, let's go into the draft of game number one. Actually, this is a best of one. Ah oh, man, what a letdown. Would have loved to see more games, but hey. Worlds is still going on. We're going to see a couple more games, right? Let's just see the draft for this very uh, interesting game number one. Again, LPL versus LCK. We just saw an absolute, uh, yeah, poor performance from both Matt and PLG. I don't want to talk about it. It was disgusting. It was like a plains game or whatever. Absolutely vile. Uh, let's hope some better gameplay and let's start with the draft again. I've teased it, man. Let's see. We have a uh, Oriana ban against Faker, right? Obviously, he just got a skin. And then Yon, Skana, Tristana bans on the other side. Uh, obviously, right? Um, Yon and Zix, quite powerful champions, right? Um, and Tristana, I think, is just for Cream, right? He has been an AD mid lane enjoyer, right? And uh, yeah, let's just let's just hear what the casters say. Okay, and uh, yeah, Aurora first pick makes some sense. I don't love the champion. I'm just not seeing it yet. Maybe I need to see what pro players do and then we'll we'll see, right? She just feels like an old bot and uh, it's now revealed at this point in the draft that's also mid lane Aurora. Uh, let's not think about how that one went last time. I mean, I guess that's why they banned the Oriana because Oriana last time just put her ball into... Okay. And uh, yeah. Anyway, Ash and Nico being picked up. Nico, a champion that I've heard lots of like voices about coming into worlds and like around world play and whatever. And yeah, it's supposed to be a really strong champion. We have not seen it yet. Let's just let's just hope. Didn't Kuri play it once? Well, anyway, uh, Ash for Gumayushi. Ash in general, you know how it goes. Absolutely overpowered champion. Such a strong kid. Love it. Jin on the other side. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, Jin's pretty good. Like the double energized item into crit and uh, yeah, so much damage, so much utility, just great. And 369 is like Uga Booga, me Renekton, me Smash, and uh, Zeus says me Jax, me Smash. Uh, let's just see how this one goes. Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty Uga Booga top lane. Um, bit sad that we don't get anything spicy here, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's still the Nico Flex potential, obviously, for like mid lane. Uh, or anything like that. Actually, you could also flex Nico into top lane and put the Jax into the jungle. Red T1 still, in theory, has a lot of potential with their comp. Whereas TES, I mean, honestly, same, right? You could flex Aurora and Renekton uh, for both mid lane and top lane, um, depending on like how how the next couple of uh, picks go, right? Both ban out some supporters, right? Um, yeah, this is like actually Brom, Brom. You have to pick Brom, you know, no? No, 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 no. Okay, so first of all, you now revealed that the Nico is not going to be the support. And you picked Rakan, so you picked a bad champion against this enemy composition, or at least what we suppose is coming out, right? Because we expect, yeah, something like Rel, an engage champion, and we also expect an. Well, it could, there could also be space for a carry jungler, but that's not really what TN like, likes to play, right? We'll have to see, we'll have to see, but I expect something uh, a bit more like Zaxak. Actually, Sejuani's banned, what, what else is available here in the jungle? Vi is still up, right? And like, we have Ash and Nico who are decently immobile, but maybe that's too much AD and so... Oh, Skana is also still available. Uh, so yeah, Skana, Rel, Renekton, and we picked the, the Rakan, so... Again, this should have been a Braum. This sh this should have been Braum, no? And then we pick Vi. That is just fucking stupid. Wukong also not better. Okay, yeah, so T1. I, I think, like, interesting first three set of champions, right? Because n not in themselves, but because of the flex potential they have. But here picking up the Rakan is just really fucking stupid. It's just not good against the champions that we should be able to predict 
that are coming in for the TES side. And on the other side, like the Wukong then as an R5, like we hold jungle pick, like jungle counter pick really matters right now. Like absolutely not. Like what the hell? Anyway, whatever. Top lane matchup individually should be fine, right? Depends on execution. Jungle matchup, who the fuck cares? It's about the ganking and about setting the teams ahead. No one cares about the individual players here. At least not in this matchup. Mid lane matchup, what the hell? I'm not going to act like I know what's going on, but Nico in lane is usually pretty good. And Aurora has been, like in my eyes, seen to struggle with champions that actually have more than like two range, right? So that's that, the bot lane matchup. Hey, uh, it kind of depends on execution. I think Rel is pretty fucking powerful. But on the other side, yeah, I think TS has the lead here. I'm not a big believer in Rakan. Not in this uh, bot lane matchup, not in this game, and probably not in this meta either, right? At least not when the focus stays on like beefy boys and like more bruisery champions, right? And AD carries that are just supportive and so on and so on. I don't know if uh, Rakan is the pick. But anyway, let's just go into game number one and see what T1 can do against the opposition here. Scorch and Joyce in the mid lane. Hi, yeah. And this is global power ranking four against six. T1 is still regarded as six. I thought everyone was doubting them, but hey, they're still T1, still EWS, uh, EWC champions. Okay, what do we have on the other side? Oh, okay, so um, two MSI appearances versus oh, is, what is this? Is this one v ones? No, this is just uh, comparison. So TS best is our worst. Oh, wait, actually, we're getting a so not solo kill, but we're getting a kill. Let's go. Uh, 369, yeah. Let's let's get that guy. Very nine. nice. And uh, yeah, regard this first blood for Zeus, that's going to be really helpful in this matchup. Not that we're going to see a standard matchup anyway, because T1 says, hey, let's lane swap. We pick a ranged support and we are lane swapping away from the melee support. Yes, we are very smart. Okay, so. We are at the fifth minute mark here, right? Uh, Guma just finished bullying top lane and has now reset. You know how it goes, five minutes and so on, so on, so on, you're right. And let's see the priority for grubs. So Guma is still heading top and uh, Jackie is uh, yeah, still heading bot. So yeah, T1 probably is going to pick up the grubs here and uh, well, looks quite good, right? We have a bit of a gold lead here, not something too massive, right? Um, but uh, should be should be fine should be fine here. So it's just grubs for first dragon. It's a good first dragon, but hey, you know the grubs, right? We don't like them, but hey, if T1 picks them up, well, maybe we can be happy with them. Anyway, the bulwark passive has fallen down. Not the bulwark, the what is it? The the shield or whatever for the turrets has fallen down here at this point. So now it's perfectly legal to attack turrets. And I mean, on the other side, it's a Jin hitting a turret. So. Yeah, I mean, this is just T1 picking up a free turret, right? Maybe against uh, the... Oh, actually, he picked up two plates? I mean, sure, T1 now at the end of this play will be able to do some more, but... Yeah, I mean, Jackie Love, sure, he's going to like have some benefits, right? But... Like, uh, Like, trying to do a lane swap turret push? Jin versus Ash? And Jax, absolutely crazy what TS is thinking there. Uh, but hey, they still get some plate gold for the Jin, and uh, that's good for him at least, right? So Zeus here going to eat a big wave, right? Kind of suffered in uh, the CS department here due to some of the trades. Okay, there's the play, there's the flash. Guma picks up a kill. Let's just see how the extended place goes. I don't think it's going to go that well, but they don't have that much damage left in the tank. But uh, sadly, Carrier is not a provider of any usefulness here. Uh, this champion is just not good enough, right? This level of CC is just not reliable and not helpful, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But hey, it's going to be a one for one. And uh, if you look at who picked up the kills, a kill on Guma or a kill on Skarner, even if this was a bit of a rough play here, uh, right? If it's just a 2v2, we are absolutely smashing their faces in. But sadly, the life is not life is not fair and owner is still, uh, yeah, chilling somewhere else, right? Um, the junglers so far this game have been absolutely irrelevant, so sadly I have not paid much attention to like what's going on there. Uh, yeah, even with 10 CS lead, it's just not enough. The kill makes it up, and uh, such owner is behind by a bit. 
Now we have a bit of a... Uh, okay. Yeah, they get Cream's ult. They chunk him out a bit. They're going to sacrifice the grubs for it. But uh, let's see. The the idea here is attack bot lane turret. Okay. Uh, oh my god, that's everyone. Everyone T1 of T1 just shows up in bot lane. 369 gets the wave though. But does it really matter? Now T1... Can we defend? Okay, mid lane turret is just Jin. He will pick up a plate. Uh, but it's a bit iffy, right? We're picking up the turret, that's great. But can we get something on top of that? I mean, I get we get the kill, we get uh, the turret, right? It's pretty good. We have a gold lead now on um, like all players. Let's go. And it's one to three, three to three in grubs, but uh, a, bit, a bit iffy that we couldn't be uh, like, in a position to pick up the dragon here as well. Now, obviously. We just need to be able to execute the fights now at the back of it. But I think we have some good tools. We have some team fighting tools here and there, right? That's why we picked Carrier. Uh, not for like anything cool, but just to be able to have this. Faker goes in, gets the two manals. Guma on the side as well, dishing out tons of damage. Actually, what the fuck? What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened? Jin just gets a quadra kill. Shut the fuck up! Jackie Love can only right click, there's nothing a Jin does here. He just right clicks, what the hell? Why did we all die instantly? What happened? Is it just static shift being OP? OP? What the fuck? What happened? Yeah, but so what? It's just yeah, it's just it's just it's literally just static shift. Oh my god, it's just static shift. Static shift is so broken. I already knew it, but yeah. Once you get the first kill, you get the uh, unlimited lightning uh, chain for 270 damage, I believe it is, and that is so much damage in the early game, right? That's why I think Static Shift is a really good first item for many AD carries. Sure, not everyone can, uh, like, has the luxury to go for it, right? Because it's not a crit item uh, anymore. So that's that. But this is very bad. Jin is now full build. He is now at, like, one of his strongest, arguably. Uh, with Infinity Edge on, a, uh, what is it, third spot. He's going to have a massive power spike again. But, yeah, this is, this was not... Fun times, man. Static shift just killed our entire team there. And, I mean, also you could argue that, uh, yeah, that we are not as tanky as the enemy team, right? And that our damage is a bit lower. Because also we are squishier, right? So that damage in rela uh, relation to, I don't know, stats, whatever you want to call it. Right? Skana is tankier than uh, Bukong. And because he lives longer, he's going to be able to deal a bit more damage. Rel is much tankier than Rakan and generally just do does more damage. Anyway, can we defend the Herald here? No, we're just standing around and doing nothing. Not that we have much to do here, right? And the problem is, if we see 5 to 4, right? The gold lead that we have is like mostly just in the standing gold, in the two turrets to zero that we have. And our turrets aren't that healthy. They're decently healthy, but not that healthy. So if TES, if they get another like favorable like fight or a good map position or anything like that, and they take our turrets, then the game is going to go whoop, down in a fucking drain. Like now, fighting around uh, places where this gin is is absolutely vile. It's going to be so terrible. Some. Okay, okay, okay. Guma, you have to be careful here. Okay, so we defend this turret barely. This mid lane turret is pretty cool for us, right? Uh, if it's our base of operations. Let's just see. We have to play this one a bit more respectfully, right? Because now, Jin auto attacking is actually like more a threat and not just the static shift. Because Jin now has some ADs, some attack speed, which obviously also transfers to AD for Jin. So yeah, it's it's rough. Uh, they have Ward Zero on Zeus, and yeah, I mean, we still have some cool tools, but yeah, it's it's very awkward, right? Guma here has to be careful, right? Just contesting with the Q and Static Shift of the Jin, not cool, even as an Ash with W. 
But uh, yeah, okay, Faker goes in, massive one more combo again, and that's the Jackie, love on the dead floor. That's not how you say that. Anyway, we pick up Tien as well, and just like that, the NH does not fail. Faker sacrifices his life valiantly for the cause, and we pick up three kills in response at the dragon on top of that, denying the dragon stacking off TES. And that's what we needed. A banger engage from our mid laner. Hopefully he can pick up uh, the Zonias in the near future so that he uh, might not instantly die. And he goes in, owner sets it up, Faker immediately follow up and everyone just presses their R keys in unison to destroy our opponents. Ay yeah 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 yeah. <clears throat> Man, that's him, that's him, that's the goal. I mean, again, uh, Ono was the first one to go in, so like I'm not saying it's like it's all Faker, right? But it's like Ono goes in, Faker with the like it's it's split second. It's like you can't even see it. It's just the same moment. Faker f immediately follows up, right? Because Jackie is knock up and then he can't immediately like obviously flash away. He dies with flash up, right? Regardless, regardless, let's see. So the gold lead in the AD carry position and support position is kind of striking, right? So Guma picking up a kill, picking up some more CS here and there, right? He was really behind in CS. Um, I, again, didn't pay that much attention because I'm a fucking bozo, but I uh, heard the caster say it was because he was late to like some of the lanes uh, in the early game, right? Uh, because probably of the like level one fighting, maybe he backed and then was late to top lane and missed something. Regardless, regardless, Guma catching up in CS, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's still good farming. Anyway, they're overforcing here for this turret, or are they? No! Oh my god, he jumps into the ult, we still don't get Jackie, but do we get enough? There's the curtain call, and it is curtains for us. Remember, static shift procs of abilities as well. Oh my god, T1 here, a bit too over eager, and a big, big F is that Carrier, when he was trying to go in, like immediately jumped next to, I don't know who it was, probably owner, and they like, got double ulted by Tian. Oh my, oh my, it's just a fucking messy game here. Hi, yeah, and uh, yeah, we see Jin. Jin is cool, but Static Shift is just fucking broken. That item does, that item probably did more damage than like some other player in this uh, in this team fight, right? Getting the fucking unlimited bounces on the passive, uh, on the hidden passive, right, for the 270 per kill. And here, Carrier jumps and immediately gets ulted. And, like, Zeus here tries to get, in, uh, like, inside it. But, like, if our ult just goes on the front lane, here, look at it. Pew. The chains. Pew, 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 pew. And, yeah, it just, it does so much damage. This is just, I don't know, like, Black Cleaver situation from 1990. Look at this! Look at this! He does more... No, it's not more. Is it more? Uh, nah, barely. But this is so much magic damage. So much magic damage is being done just by Static Shift, right? Jin does not do magic damage otherwise. Sadly, this top lane matchup has not been all that relevant anyway. Just classic uh, gameplay where, hey, top lane is irrelevant. Okay, he buffers the E, gets the stun and jumps away, so that's no Skarner ult for the next dragon fight in 19 seconds. On uh, any other cooldowns that we gained, Ash Arrow used, uh, that's a bit iffy, but hey, that should be a free dragon for us, no? Zeus, okay, goes back, buys the second item, that's pretty good for him. Standard Sky and Trinity Force, that's good damage. But hey, they're threatening Baron, I don't think they have enough damage to, to, for it, but... Uh, Faker goes in... Doesn't get anything really here. That was not great. He should not have used his abilities like that. But hey, on the back of it, T1 still has the pressure around the situation. And without Tian's old and no vision, TS does not feel comfortable to step up. Ay, 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 ay. This is iffy. What are we fighting for? Baron is not a realistic threat here. 24 minutes. Okay, okay. Are you ready, guys? Let's see, let's see. The dragon fight here. Both teams have two, so it's about so. Point! Let's get ready, Faker and friends. Find a cool engage. Come on, come on, come on. Any engage onto uh, someone that is not Jackie Love, though, is absolutely infeeding. So you see, looking for a flank angle. Where is Owner? Where is Owner? They just pick up the dragon and leave. 369 gets CC chained, but he just slices and dices away. Like, someone is missing Faker here, looking for a play. Flashes forward, gets three, but that's just. Like, we are not winning fights where we don't get... What are they doing? Yeah, I mean... Okay. Tomorrow.
Okay, that's game number one at Worlds, absolutely fucking thrown away out of the window. I have no clue what we just did there. We just actually lose the game, right? We just get aced at 30 minutes and lose the game because... Oh god. Yeah, this, this game is horrible. This game was fucking shit. We were in such a good spot, but hey, let's just infeed into Jackie and then hey, let's let's just do it again. We did it twice this game, right? First of all, we gave him the quadra kill, which obviously, like, who, who would, like, actually, like, is that a reasonable uh, assumption that Static Shift just does, like, 5,000 damage in a team fight? Well, maybe not. And then we do it again and again, right, where we engage. I mean, this is sadly on Faker, sadly, because, like, he is the one, like, that's leading the charge in the engages, where... We're engaged onto like three people, but it just does not matter. Aurora doesn't need to do anything, she just needs to press ult, and usually she gets to do that, even if we attack her, right? We're also like not really like all that high in damage, right? We have like Wukong and Jack's damage is like okay, yeah, it's there, it's not nothing, it's there. And Ash is not really known for like high damage either, right? She, she again, if she gets to auto attack, sure, she does something. It's the same as with the others. She has damage, right? She is not a fucking tank, but it's not explosive. It's not high damage to deal with the fucking tanky people. So I think the first mistake was the Rakan pick. And like, just in general, R4, R5 was absolutely fucking stupid. Brel and Skarnar are both up and the enemy team has these champions elected. So we don't pick Braum, we don't pick Brel, we don't pick Skarnar, right? We don't pick these champions, we pick R4, Rakan? That already, I think, was so bad. That already was like a like game-losing move, right? Because it just means we don't have a support. And they get super strong champions. Like, Skarna is the first pick champion in this meta. And we give it to them on fucking, what is it, B4? Yeah, they get it on B4. What the fuck? That was, that's, that's just... That's just not okay. Uh, pair it up with the Rel. They have super beefy, super tanky people. And we have like Jax. I, I will never get it. I will never get it. It's just so retarded. It's just so retarded. If you want to fucking 5v5 team fight, right? If you pick um, Rakan, Wukong, Nico, right? You just look for fucking massive wombo combo engages. Then why the hell is your top laner a Jax? Like, he can never do what Jaxes want to do, which is like look for split push situation, right? Jax is good in skirmishes, but he's not an amazing team fighter. It just take it it forces the Jax player to be that good and the enemy team to make that many mistakes for Jax to really pop off in team fights. Again, I've talked about this for like it feels like months now, maybe even years. Who knows? But yeah, this was uh, again. Jack's pick is weird, but I mean, I guess that's a standard at this point. The Rakan pick was absolutely fucking disgusting. What are they dancing there? What the hell? Anyway, and... Yeah, Tien, Tien. We need an interview from Tien. He played fucking Skarnar. He got fucking the kind of strongest jungler of the patch on fucking B4. Because T1 prioritizes Rakan over Skarnar. They really thought, yeah, the enemy team is going to pick away um, the Rakan here. Why, man? And then again, in game, there's just it's just one simple sentence. Faker fucked up. He looked for Nico engages onto the front line, onto anyone that is not called Jackie Love, and that's just the big mistake, right? The first one with the quadra kill, I, I'll just I'll just give it to them. That happens, right? Static shift, penta, uh, quadra kill out of nowhere. You don't expect it, right? You, you may have not seen, uh, or you may have not played enough uh, ARAM games to to know what this item can do in team fights. I'll give that to you. I'll give that to you. It happens. But then doing it repeatedly afterwards, at least two or three times, that's just not legal. So uh, yeah. With that being the case, I think T1 looked good. I think they looked really good. They played the map be uh, better than uh, than TS for the most part. Uh, and then, well, they just fell flat on their faces because. They engaged on the onto the front line and left a fucking 20 kill uh, Jin in the back line doing more damage. And they picked some silly champions as well. So there's still lots of ways to improve. And well, maybe that's why we go 0-1.
then we face maybe some EU team or something. Maybe we face oh no, someone we can like actually practice against. So maybe not Mad Lion, someone who has a bit more bite to them. But uh, yeah, and then and then we go from there, right? Uh, positive news: this means that we probably are uh, avoiding Gen G for the next round and uh, like all of that. Maybe we can curve better into this tournament with this uh, yeah pretty sad loss, right? Last year, right when we won Worlds, our first game was also not really that great against Team Liquid, right? We didn't lose it, we didn't infeed it, but yeah, it was also a bit rough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about this first game. Um, I'm not all doom and gloom about this. I think we saw some pretty good things. Um, I mean, the laning phase from Faker, by the way, looked pretty good, right? So that was like some of the concerns. Shaw Cream might not have picked the, the best laning phase champion and so on and so on. But hey, I think there were some positives to take away from. So I wouldn't say FF, just fly home right now. Uh, but yeah, still some uh, some polishing needs to be done. Anyway, we see each other with more Worlds content. So make sure to leave a like and subscribe to not miss out. Bye bye, my friends.